Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part 26 of my Linear Algebra tutorial series. In this part of the tutorial, I'm going to talk about orthonormal basis. And an orthonormal basis is one in which all the vectors have length 1, meaning they're normal, and are orthogonal, meaning perpendicular, to every other vector in the set. And I have a lot to do, so let's get into it. So you may ask yourself, well, what is the use of orthonormal basis? Well, they are going to, once again, allow us to simplify linear algebra problems. And as I have previously covered, how to convert to different basis, as you will find, it is very convenient to convert to a orthonormal basis. And just to draw this out so you can see, let's say we have a vector like this. We have another vector like this that's perpendicular, if I can draw a straight line, and then we're going to have another vector that goes up like that, okay? So that is what I'm referring to when I talk about orthonormal basis. So let's go and let's work through an example. Like always, that makes it much easier. What I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to find out if a set of vectors are orthonormal. These are going to be a little bit complicated, so we're going to have 2 divided by square root of 6, 1 divided by square root of 6, and minus 1 divided by square root of 6. That is one vector in our set. We are also going to have 0, 1 divided by square root of 2, and 1 divided by square root of 2. And then we're going to have a final vector here, which is going to be 1 over square root of 3, and minus 1 divided by square root of 3, and again, 1 divided by square root of 3. So we have these three vectors in this set, and we want to find out if they are orthonormal. Well, what did I say? I said that they are going to have a length of 1, and they are going to be orthogonal or perpendicular to each other. So what we want to do first is, I'm going to go get rid of this just so we have a little bit more screen real estate. Okay. So we want to find out if these are orthogonal. All right. So orthogonal. Well, what does orthogonal mean? Well, that means if I take one of our vectors and multiply it times another one of our vectors, I am going to get a value of zero. So what we're going to do is we're going to go and verify all these. Actually, instead of writing them out, I am going to just copy them. So for our first one, we have this guy right here. And we are going to multiply it times the vector that is right next to it, right like this. Okay, and this is going to be equal to 2 over square root of 6 times 0 plus 1 over the square root of 6 times 1 over the square root of 2 and minus 1 over the square root of 6 times 1 over the square root of 2. And if you go and work out all that math, you will find that this gives you a value of 0. And that makes sense because we're basically just taking this guy and subtracting this guy. All right. Now let's go and test out the next vector. Throw this right here. Times. Go and grab this guy right here. Put that inside of there like this. And if we go and work this out, this once again is going to be equal to 2 square root of 6 times 1 over square root of 3 minus 1 over square root of 6 times 1 over square root of 3 minus 1 over square root of 3 times 1 over the square root of 6, which is going to end up being equal to 1 over 3 square root of 2 minus 1 over 3 square root of 2, which is going to be equal to 0. All right, so we got both of those. Now what I want to do is get the these two guys up here. So I might as well just copy them both at the same time. 
So let's get both of them in here, throw them in there together. This is going to be equal to 0 times 1 over square root of 3 plus 1 over square root of 2 times negative 1 over square root of 3 plus 1 over square root of 2 times 1 over the square root of 3. This is going to end up also being equal to 1 over square root of 6 minus 1 over square root of 6, which is going to give us a value of 0. And now we know that they're both orthogonal. So we got that set. Now what I need to do is find out, well actually we can come up here and write yes next orthogonal. All right. Now we have our other two and what we want to do is find out if they are normal. What we're going to do here is we are going to square them and expect a value of one. Or to put this another way, so we have all three of these vectors here and and now I just need to solve these. So what's this going to end up being? It's going to end up being 2 square root of 6 times 2 square root of 6 plus 1 over square root of 6 times 1 over square root of 6 plus, let's move this guy out of here, 1 minus square root of 6 times 1 square root of 6. This, this is going to end up being a little bit more complicated. What I want to do now is factor out the common terms and then I want to add these. So 1 over square root of 6 times 2 square root of 6 plus 1 over square root of 6 and this will be 2 thirds. And then I need to multiply these values and then add them together, which is going to end up being 2 thirds plus 1 third, which equals 3 over 3, which of course gives us a value of 1. All right, let's do the next one. And this guy is going to end up being 0 plus 1 over square root of 2 times 1 over square root of 2 plus 1 over square root of 2 times 1 over square root of 2. Again, I'm going to factor out the like terms. So this is going to end up being equal to 1 square root of 2, 1 square root of 2, plus 1 square root of 2, which is going to end up being equal to 2 square root of 2, which is going to be equal to 2 over 2 to the 1 half, and this is using the radical rule, which I have covered in the past. And then I want to use my exponent rule, which is going to end up being equal to 2, 1 minus a half, which is going to end up being equal to square root of 2 divided by square root of 2, which is going to be equal to 1. All right. And just to move on, just trust me, work this guy out it's also going to be equal to 1. All right, so now what I want to do is show you how we can go and use a set of vectors like this and then multiply it times a vector in standard base to convert it to an alternate basis. All right, so we have our little set of vectors here. What I can do, I'm just going to come in here just to save a little bit of time. I'm going to go get rid of this. And I'm going to go get rid of this, and get rid of this, and get rid of this, and there we go. All right, so we have our matrix, and what we want to do is, let's say we have our vector x, which is a vector in the standard basis, and we want to convert it to an alternate basis. What we would normally do in the past is we would augment these matrices and then convert them to reduced row echelon form. However, we can instead, in this situation, just convert using a dot product. So let's say this ends up being equal to 3, negative 6, and 6. All right, this is what we get. What we want to do is instead convert this. So all we need to do to do that is just take 
these matrix and find the dot product of them. So, throw that like that, throw that like that. And if we do, this math is going to be a little bit more complicated. And after I'm done doing this, I'm going to ex explain to you exactly why we can do this. All right. So this is going to end up being equal to 2 over the square root of 6 times 3 plus 0 plus 1 over square root of 3 times 6. And then we're going to have 1 over square root of 6 times 3 plus 1 over square root of 2 times negative 6 plus negative 1 square root of 3 times 6. And then finally, we will have negative 1 over square root of 6 times 3 plus 1 over square root of 2 times negative 6 plus 1 over square root of 3 times 6. And if we go and work all of this math out, we will get a final vector that's going to end up being equal to 2 square root of 3 plus square root of 6 and square root of 3 over 2. The next one example I'm going to show you is less complex than this. Minus 2 square root of 3 and negative square root of 3 over 2 minus 3 square root of 2 plus 2 square root of 3. Okay, so that's how we would work that out. Now let me explain exactly why this works and also provide you with maybe an example that might be a little bit easier to grasp. Now previously, as we have discussed, to find the projection of x, you would go, let's just write this, projection, of x, and this is going to be onto a subspace V. The formula that we used was P, P transpose, P, whoops, there we are, and negative one, P transpose x, our vector. Well, this part right here is basically the identity matrix. So we can simplify this and instead write this as P, P transpose X. All right. And to project onto a subspace, then we need the matrix that defines that subspace. And that matrix is transposed to get the projection matrix. And what we'll be able to do with that after we get it is to project any vector into that subspace. Let me give you one more example here. So let's say we have a vector and it is equal to O, O, negative one. And we have another one which is equal to one square root of two, one square root of two and zero. And just trust me, these, these are orthonormal vectors. So what does this mean? Well, this means that A is going to end up being equal to these two vectors. So 0, 0, negative 1, 1 and square root of 2, 1 and square root of 2, and 0. And what does that mean? Well, that means that A transpose is going to end up being equal to 0, 1 over square root of 2, 0, 1 over square root of 2, negative 1, and 0. So what we're going to be able to do now is use this to project onto the subspace defined by vector 1 and 2. So A, A transpose is going to be equal to, I'm not going to write these out again, I'm just going to copy them, throw that right there, throw that right there, and if we multiply these together, this is going to end up being equal to 1 half, 1 half, 0, 1 half, 1 half, and 0, and 0, and 0, and 1. And there we got it. And now we're going to be able to use this to take any vector and throw it onto our new subspace. So we're going to take this guy. Let's just act like this doesn't exist anymore. So get rid of all that. Throw that over there. And let's go and say we have a vector 
which is 2, 4, and 6. Well, if we go and work this out, this is going to come out to 3, 3, and 6. And this guy is going to be the projection of any vector, but specifically this vector, into the subspace V. Okay, so hopefully I cleared up what it means to be orthonormal, how to verify if vectors are orthonormal, and how they can be used to make projections onto new subspaces. And like always, please leave your questions and comments down below. Otherwise, till next